welcome to our Sunday service. My name is Laurie Mickelson and I pastor the Northern Lights Christian Fellowship Church of the Nazarene here in Chetwin. Let's open with prayer. O oh Lord, we thank you for the day. We thank you for always being there even when we may not feel it. Teach us to be still and trust you with all portions of our lives. Amen. Good morning. I want you to stop for a moment and think back to when you had little kids in a car and were going somewhere. Maybe you were on vacation. Remember those endless questions after you'd been driving for a while? Are we there yet? How much longer? Are we ever going to get there? Did you ever notice that those kid kinds of questions never come when the kids are having a great time? If we're taking the kids to Disney World, they never once ask, how much longer? Are we done yet? Can we go home? It's the same for us as adults. When times are going great, we seldom ask, how much longer is this going to last? But when times are rough, they seem to go on and on and on. We begin to wonder if it will ever end. Just think about the last two and a half years. A story is told of a Sunday school class that had been asked a question. In your time of discouragement, what is your favorite scripture? A young man said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Psalm 23, verse 1. A middle-aged woman said, God is my refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Psalm 46, verse 1. A middle-aged woman said, God is my refuge and... Uh, Another woman said, In this world you shall have tribulations, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. John 16, 33 to 35. Then John, an 80-year-old man, said, And it came to pass. 396 times in the Bible. The class started to laugh a little, thinking that old John's lack of memory was getting the best of him. When the snickering stopped, he said, at 30, I lost my job with 600 mouths and a wife to feed. I don't know how I would make it. At 40, my eldest son was killed overseas in the war. It knocked me down. At 50, my house burned to the ground. Nothing was saved. At 60, my wife of 40 years got cancer. It slowly ate her away. We cried together many nights on our knees in prayer. At 65, she died. I still miss her today. The agony I went through in each of these situations was unbelievable. I wondered where God was. But each time I looked in the Bible, I saw one of those 396 verses that said, and it came to pass. I felt that God was telling me my pain and my circumstances were also going to pass and that God would get me through it. When life gets rough, we need to remember old John's verse, and it came to pass. David had times in his life when he felt like tough times would never end. Maybe it was as simple as while he was sitting out in the hot sun watching the sheep. Is this day ever going to end? Maybe it was a little bit more serious, like all those years that he was being chased by Saul and his army. And he was living like a refugee. A refugee is simply someone who is fleeing, hoping to find a place of safety, a place to lay his head. But that wasn't the worst for David. Perhaps the most difficult things David had to face was the turmoil in his own family, when one of his sons raped his daughter, when one of his sons, using many of his own army, revolted and tried to kill him, or when one of his sons was murdered by another. David's life was filled with turmoil. When tragedy struck, David felt as if it would last forever. In fact, in just the book of Psalms, those words, how long, are found 22 times. And the chapter with the greatest number of occurrences of those words is Psalm chapter 13, where it occurs four times. As we read and study this psalm, we will notice a natural progression in thinking. We can almost picture this psalm as a mountain. When it begins, David is at its lowest valley of his life. But in the second stanza, we see that David has begun to climb that mountain of faith before him. And in the third stanza, David has reached the top of the mountain and he can look back and see how God was with him. So let's take a look at each of these stanzas. David in the deepest valley. 
Psalm 13, verse 1. O Lord, how long will you forget me? Forever? How long must I struggle with anguish in my soul, with sorrow in my heart every day? How long will my enemy have the upper hand? David just jumps right in by sharing with God what was on his heart. One thing we learn from David in the Psalms is that we can always bear our souls to God. Even when we're angry or frustrated with God, it's okay to tell God just that. David doesn't pull any punches, and neither should we. It's obvious that David wanted God to intervene before now and do something about his situation. David had likely persisted in prayer to God for his needs. Knowing what we know about David, he had probably poured his heart out to God over and over again. But now he had gotten to the end of his rope, and it's like he is saying to God, God, do you even know I am here? Can you hear me when I cry out to you? Do you care what I'm going through? Am I ever going to pass through this valley of the shadow of death? Will I ever get through all this? I can't stand it much more. And we can certainly identify with David. We've been there. We've cried out to God until we couldn't cry anymore. We've reached the end of our rope, and God didn't seem to even know what we were going through. And when we get there, we need to realize that we can still bring all our frustration and all our pain to God. David could have given up. He could have said, well, forget this. God isn't doing anything. I'll just have to take matters into my own hands. But David didn't give up because we see him here in Psalm 13 pouring out his guts to God. Don't give up on God, even if he hasn't answered you, even if you feel he isn't listening, even if you feel abandoned. Go to God and just open up and share with him exactly how you're feeling. Continue to go to God in prayer. As we will see later, if we persist in our prayer life, God will come, and we will see that mountaintop again. Stanza number two, David starts the climb. In the second stanza, we see that David is still struggling, but at least he started climbing the mountain of faith before him. He is no longer languishing in the valley. I really enjoy reading about the Tour de France. For those of you who don't know, the Tour de France is a bike race that lasts three weeks and travels over 2,000 miles. It goes through the Alps and the Pyrenees Mountains, so it's a very difficult race, probably one of the most arduous boarding events of all. Lance Armstrong was a biker in those days. You may know his story. He was diagnosed with brain cancer and he underwent surgery and radiation therapy. He wasn't expected to survive, but Lance not only survived, but he has come back in a major way. He was the man to beat in the Tour de France in 1998. If he won that year, he would have been only the second man to win the Tour five times in a row, and the only American to do so. If you read Lance's book and you read his quotes during the race, you will see that Lance is extremely focused. He has a strong determination, a strong drive to compete. You can see it in his face. You can hear it in his voice. Another American, Taylor Hamilton, was also competing that year. Earlier in the race, he had an accident on his bike and broke his collarbone, and yet he still raced, broken collarbone and all. Sometimes that is the kind of drive and determination that we need to even begin the climb of the mountain before us. If the truth be told, we probably feel like giving up. We would rather just throw in the towel, but we are confident that the climb is worth the effort. The strain of the effort of the climb won't last forever, and we're hoping that when we reach the mountaintop that there will be a blessing waiting for us. We have to persist. We can't give up in the middle. Psalm 13, verse 34. Turn and answer me, O Lord my God. Restore the sparkle in my eyes, or I will die. Don't let my enemies gloat, saying, We have defeated him. Don't let them rejoice at my downfall. David is simply saying, give light to my eyes or I will die. He has stopped asking how long, and now his request is for understanding. It's almost as if David is saying, if I could just understand why I'm going through this, this would help. Or if I just knew what was going on, I'd be okay. 
I feel like I'm in the dark. Stanza number three, David on the mountaintop. Psalm 13, verse five and six. But I trust in your unfailing love. I will rejoice because you have rescued me. I will sing to the Lord because he is good to me. But then David arrives at the mountaintop of faith. David is saying, God, I may not have all the answers, but I'm going to trust you anyway. I know that you love me and that knowledge is, and that knowledge is enough to bring a so song to my heart. And then in Psalm 13, verse 6, we can almost imagine that David is looking back. He sees all that he has come through. He sees the valley where he started out. He sees that there were times that he didn't think that God was there, but now he remembers that God was there all the time. We can take a page or two from David's Psalms. Over and over again, we see his example of communicating with God and getting his prayers answered. If we hang in there, if we will persist, if we will struggle with all our might to climb this mountain, it may seem unsurmountable at times, but if we continue to cry out to God, even to the point of expressing all our frustration and pain, we will reach the mountaintop. We will be able to reach the summit and look back and realize, yes, God really does love me, and he has really been good to me, and we will have a song in our heart once again. We've all been in the valley at one time or another. We've questioned God. We've asked, how long are you going to let this go on? Maybe you're there right now, and the pain that you feel is so fresh and so raw. But like David, we continue to cry out to God. He can handle our questions, our pain, our frustration, and yes, even our anger. And we begin to climb that mountain of faith once again. We may not feel like it. We may feel like giving up many times along the way. But if we will persist, there's a blessing waiting for us at the top. We need to realize that John, and it came to pass. Our pain won't last forever. The terrible circumstances that you find yourself in are temporary, and they will pass. Sometime or another, perhaps not as soon as we would like, but hang in there. And when we do, we will be able to shout from the top of our lungs from the mountaintop. Psalm 13, verse 5 and 6. But I trust in your unfailing love. I will rejoice because you have rescued me. I will sing to the Lord because he is good to me. Let's close in prayer. O oh Lord, we're so grateful for your very present help in time of trouble. While we may not always understand, we trust you because you are faithful. We are often reminded of your prophet Jeremiah, who reminds us over and over again in Jeremiah 29, verse 11, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Help us to cling to those promises and trust you with all things. Amen.